guys. Hey guys, we're here on the boulevard and we're going to interview Danny. He just came from the U.S. and Janet's going to handle the camera work. So I hope you like this video and subscribe to our channel. So let's get to the interview. Yeah. Bye Janet. Bye. Hey Danny, thanks for coming to our, sh uh, our channel. Let Thank me interview you. Thanks for having me. It's, it's going to be fun. How long, how long ago did you arrive in the Philippines? I arrived here last Saturday, so it's just only been a few days. A few days? And did you come right to Dumaguete? Or? No, I flew into Cebu, and then I stayed there a couple of days. They had that big celebration uh, synologue? synologue going yeah. on. Uh, I didn't really watch or participate, but that just happened to be go what's going on. And I uh, sat down with uh, a couple other YouTubers and, and visited with them, people that I, you know, that I watch and learn from. Uh, spent a few days there and then I took the boat, uh, the ferry actually, over, over here and arrived Saturday. How was the ferry ride? You know, to me it was nice. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was air conditioned, it was comfortable. I wanted to do like the business class but that was full so I just did regular traveler. And uh, you know, the chairs were comfortable enough. Uh, a lot of people sitting on it. There was, uh, it, it goes to another island before it comes here. Uh, and, and from Cebu to that other island, I Tabalera, can't remember. Tabalera, yeah. yeah. Tabalera. Uh, from, from, from there, the boat was so full, it's like, man, I'm on a cattle boat. <laughs> you know, because there's so many people. Yeah. But, you know, the, the ride was pleasant. And, of course, being a, you know, a former Navy guy, it was kind of like nice to reminisce about being out at sea. And so I'm just looking out the window, watching the water. That, that just kind of, uh, that's just something I enjoy. Can I ask how much the ferry was from Cebu to here, roughly? Is around 30, 35 bucks. About 30, 35 dollars. Yeah, it's yeah. like, like way reasonable. Yeah. It took about like five hours. Oh, that wasn't bad. What a stop. That With the stop, a, but the stop yeah. was only like actually a few minutes. Yeah, that's um, But yeah, it was, it was a nice smooth ride. It was I've never, pleasurable. I've never taken the ferry to Cebu. I've taken it to Bohol and back, but we've never been up to Cebu. You mentioned uh, you chatted with some YouTubers. Are you aspiring to be a YouTuber? Yes, I'm. Uh, I, I have a YouTube channel up already. It's it's just got a couple of very badly done starters until I learn, you know, the the process. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to do that uh, and be totally different from everyone else. I, I'm going to have different content. Um, what's the name? What's the name of your YouTube? Uh, YouTube channel is called Danny Dubose. Dude in the Philippines. Dude in the Philippines. Well, I'll put a link below in the description for you guys if you're interested. He's just starting out, so the, the content is uh, going to be a little old. Give him a few weeks to get some new content up in there. I'm sure he'll let me know when he's ready, and we'll re-interview and uh, discuss some of the topics. Uh, what kind of lifestyle are you going to lead here in the Dumaguete? A lot of people come here and uh, you know they're they're younger and they 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 just want to do the dating scene. You got the other guys that come here who are already married or have a girlfriend, and they just want to settle down. Uh, where where are you in the lifestyle to be in Dumaguete? Not really sure. Uh, other than you know my first intentions are you know finding someone to date and things like that is just not on my radar at the moment. I wanna I wanna get in, get settled in, um, and you know, see every, all the sights and, and, and things, be able to have some freedom to move around and, and just, you know, do some different islands and do things. Um, if I ever do uh, find someone to, to date or whatever, um, that'll be fine, but it's just not something I'm out looking for. My focus right now is to just get settled in, get a channel started, um, and, you know, and I'm visiting with all the YouTubers I've been watching, which have all been very helpful. Uh, for my, my coming here for understanding you know what what I'm in for and and what I'm gonna see you know so when you got off the boat at Dumaguete did you already have a place to stay did you have a hotel Airbnb or something no actually uh, of course from what you hear from a lot of channels like oh it's it's easy to find a place it's, it's not bad and uh, so I was looking on while I was on the boat. I had time to look on my phone. I'm looking at marketplace. Yeah, look at yeah, yeah different. You know, okay, where's the different hotels? How much are they? And and things like that. And and I just made a reservation online at the Nikonor oh, Hotel. Oh, at the hotel. Yeah, 
uh, which is very simple accommodation. It's like 30 bucks a night. Yes. Uh, it's it's a real small room, but I don't spend time in the room. It's just there for sleeping. Well, yeah, you need just some place to shower, just, shave, and right. go about and then, your business. And then, yeah, the rest of the time I'm going to be outside and seeing and doing and, and finding, you know, apartment or a house to rent. House uh, hunting here is, yeah. uh, is an experience. It's much different than a lot of people lead you to believe that it's easy. It's almost like how people tell you, once you get off the plane in Manila, there's 10 girls waiting for you. That doesn't happen. Yeah, you, yeah. You know, so you have to put some effort in to find a place. Yeah. You have now, to look, look for quality, yeah. Now, transportation, do you take the trikes or the Jeep around town? I actually rented a motorcycle, uh, and that's where we, we first met, is, is uh, at that. I was oh, just, you you I was just that, yeah. getting it uh, at that time. So um, I got that for a week and run, run around. And it's my intention is first to find a place to really park, you know, apartment, house, something like that, and then go buy a motorcycle. Yeah, having a place to live first is the number one priority. And then after that, yeah. um, you'd hate to buy something and then say, oh, I'm going to go to a different island. Now you got this yeah, now bike you got to haul yeah. around or you got to quickly sell it at a loss or something. But hauling the luggage around and living out of suitcases is just, it's hard. That's, that's not... It's not pleasurable. Yeah. So, you know, I want to get to where I'm, I, I could put things away and I can jump on the bike and I can go from here to there, wherever that might be, and, and not have to worry about, you know, hauling my stuff around. And I can travel much more light. How, how have you found the food so far? Have you enjoyed the food here? I have enjoyed the food. Um, now, it's, it's a little bit more of a, it's not impossible, but a little bit more of a challenge for the food, for the kind of food that I eat for what I eat, this special diet that I do. Um, but it's it's available, it's, I'm finding it, and I'm liking this stuff. And you said a special diet, uh, what, what, what kind of diet is that? Primarily I'm on, uh, right now, a carnivore diet, where it's, you, know, you don't eat any fruits and, and, and uh, no vegetables, or except maybe a bite or two of certain ones or something. Uh, like no that, breads, no rice, no potatoes. Is that like that keto? keto it's diet? more aggressive than keto. More keto aggressive. allows you more vegetables and things. And I've got, well, so much weight that I want to lose that uh, I, I'm just going at it more aggressively. And because I like those foods, it's very sustainable for me. When you start your channel up, uh, are you going to do a, a dietary section are you going to have like a content for the diet here in the philippines and how to maintain this carnivore diet here uh you know i have so many different ideas that could be something that that uh might be helpful to other people uh where i'm finding stuff what i'm using how i eat what i eat i know uh justin carmack he has a channel he's already doing um, a lot of that so i don't know if that would i don't think that that would be a main focus it might be something i include because uh, I've never heard of that diet until I read it, uh, a couple comments from you oh, about yeah. that diet. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of information out there now. They're, they're finding out that the, the food pyramid that they first designed is actually upside down. Yeah. <laughs> I like my food. I like my chips and my ice cream. So. Oh, I like it too. <laughs> no, you know, nobody loves you know, chips, donuts, <laughs> ice cream, cake more than me. Yeah. But... It, it got me to a certain place in life. I, I had to say, you know what? I'm going to have to put it to the side. Yeah. Um, Retirement isn't just about having some amount of money to live on. You have to make your lifestyle so you can enjoy this life and live a longer time. You know, absolutely. You, you know. Yeah, do things that are sustainable for you and and uh, and make plans to live longer. So, have you visited any of the areas around here? Have you been out to Bacan or Darwin or? Sublime and or Valencia. I, I I haven't been to Valencia. I think I'm going to travel there today and take a look around. Um, I did go down towards Bacong, almost to Dawan, just as a bike ride to uh, really make myself familiar with the motorcycle. I'm used to having a big bike, like a big chopper, big heavy thing, and being on these little scooters. Uh, you would think it would be easier, but for me, it's a little harder because it's like standing on a skateboard yeah. for the first time. You know, it's... <laughs> it is. It, a lot of people say driving, you're foolish to drive a motorcycle here. 
you know, you're foolish to drive uh, a motorcycle in the Philippines because there's no traffic signals, there's no stop signs. Uh, how have you found the driving and the safety of the driving? Actually, you know, it's it, it's amazing. Like, there's no stop signs, like you say, no no uh, no lights, and everybody just kind of goes through. Everything just kind of mingles all together. But you know what? Everybody's traveling at a slower speed. And it's not much different than walking through a mall, I mean, without running into people. You just watch where people are going and, every, and everybody's, you know, courteous enough. Uh, once you get out there, and, you know, they let you, they let you by. Uh, but there's so much about the traffic and stuff I still need to learn. So what I'm doing is, is I'm just following other people, you know. And uh, I'll, I'll wait to go across an intersection when a, when a trike goes across the intersection. So it's like, uh, you know, running... Uh, running a rabbit out there to flesh you, you know, to flesh you, the... You uh, let that trike or that other car be the cover. If someone's going to get hit, it's going to be them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, and, and it's not only... And, and nobody's traveling that fast, so... But, uh, but you know, they're they're better seen, you know, a big old yellow trike or something. Yeah. They're much better seen. Some and, people call it uh, controlled chaos on the roads. Absolutely. You know, it's... Yeah, it, it's kind of like, you know, the weather. Sometimes you have these storms that come and, and you think, Wow, this is really bad. This is really terrible. But there's a lot of good that the storm actually does. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so, and 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 the controlled chaos, you know, aspect of it is, is, uh, I think it's a perfect example. And since you've been here, weather-wise, now I know we've had some rainy days, but we had a couple hot days here. How have you found the weather? Is it is it really hot? Is it really sticky for you, or just what you expected? Yeah, well, I was I was here in 1980, 1981, uh, when I was in the Navy, uh, so I kind of knew what to expect. But I grew up in the Southwest, in in Southern California is where I grew up, close to the Mexican border, and where there's a lot of uh, farming and, and industry down there, farm industry down there. And I used to frame houses in the 119 degree weather, uh, and it was it was drier, but it was also hotter. And then I moved to the, uh, to Las Vegas area, and you know it, it can get almost that hot there. Uh, and then I spent uh, a lot of time in, in uh, Sedona, Arizona, at a, a great retreat center I used to work at for the last 14 years. Uh, and it it can get hot there too. Yeah, I guess. So the, the warm weather, yeah, yeah, the warm weather is just it, it's no big thing for me. I, I like it better than cold weather. That's yeah, for by, sure. By, for sure hate the snow. Yeah, you can move in warm weather. Yeah, yes, you can. So, for anybody that's thinking of coming here to the Philippines for a vacation or for retirement, first of all, do you, do you suggest it? Is it for everybody or do you think it's just a select few or how do you feel about other people coming here? What should they be prepared for? If you're gonna, if you, if you think that you want to come here, number one is start watching this channel, start watching other channels that are, are people that are here. Uh, guys that will show you around town, uh, and like your channel, Mike, where, where you're showing people, you know, uh, different places where rents, what, you know, what they go for, what the budgets are, and, and, you know, we're out here in the open so people can see the environment we're in. Uh, get familiar with, you know, so that you don't have any surprises when you come here. Uh, is this the place for everybody? Well, it's like saying, uh, you know, is, is this car the right car for everybody? Everything, everybody fits into something a little different. Uh, and they have their own likes and dislikes. Uh, patience is a virtue here. Very uh, much so. And, Very much so. And you just, but I come, I come here with a different, I knew that, and I come here with a different attitude because I'm going to be retired. There's nowhere I have to be. You know, I spent many years of just must be at a certain spot and must be, you know, do this yeah, and Yeah, the pressure of being at work or on time, right. being to this appointment, and if you're 10 minutes late, you lose the appointment. Yeah, here it's, it's like a two-hour window on everything. It's, yes, you know, very casual. Set. Well, you, uh, you mentioned me. I'm going to be in this spot between 9 and 11, and I thought, well, you know, I want to go there at 9, uh, and, and I, was, I run a little bit late because of, you know, not knowing my way around yet. And then I, I decided, I looked over this way and I didn't see you, I actually, because you told me where you were going to be. And I, I just didn't see you right off. So I thought, okay, right across the street, I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. And, uh, and I end up standing behind a guy that's running grab with, with a huge order. And I'm thinking, oh man, it's like... <laughs> and then when I come out, I, I, see, I notice that you're over here. 
And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, I, I didn't want to have to make you wait on me because that's just the way mm -hmm. I am. But well, we appreciate this that. is the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, and this, you know, things happen this way, I guess. People, people move slow, and I always think people tell you, we'll meet you at 10. Well, that's about the time they're going to leave their houses at 10 and yeah. when they get there. And they want to make sure you're there first because they don't want to show up and nobody's there. So uh, Filipino time is um, something different. You have to learn. If I'm meeting an American or another foreigner, I, I really try hard to be on time, if not early. But if I'm meeting a, a Filipino or a Filipina, uh, when I get there, I get there. So, yes. so well, is there, before, before we end this, is there anything you want to say to the audience or you want to share any bad experience that's happened so far or you haven't had one yet? Really haven't had one. Um, I, I uh, you know, I've been to a couple of the coffee shops, meet a lot of nice people. Um, the people at the hotels are very nice, they're very helpful, uh, help you park your bike and it, it's, it's a, probably one of the most friendly towns that, that you can ever go to. Um, yeah. I would suggest if, if you're going to retire and you, and you would like to find a place that's probably more affordable, more tropical, this would be a place that you would absolutely want to come and look at at least. Um, yeah, Dumaguete is a pretty, pretty town. Uh, I call it a retirement community. It's, slower pace than the bigger cities so I uh, want to thank you for joining us and wish you the best of luck in your channel thanks for having me I and the name of the channel again is Danny DuBose dude in the Philippines dude I'll, in the Philippines yeah so. I'll be putting some stuff up as I learn uh, more contemplative uh, kind of things meditation and, and different uh, things I see things I do okay great well thank you and thanks guys until next time thanks for watching bye Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I will be in the center.